it was actually during my residency in dermatology that I first became aware of some of the things that could be done with hair replacement and hair diagnosis. And upon graduating uh, that residency program in 1988, I became very much involved in cosmetic procedures, including hair restoration. As it turns out, I've been doing hair restoration procedures uh, since approximately 1988, so well over 20 years of experience doing hair restoration. I think one of the most uh, interesting aspects of this kind of cosmetic surgery is that it should really be undetectable. It's not like doing uh, a rhinoplasty where someone sees an abrupt change. It's not like doing a breast augmentation where there's uh, clearly a, an obvious change. Uh, in this case, you're trying to be as natural as possible. And a component of it that I think sometimes people miss is that it's far beyond the technical aspect for hair restoration. One also should endeavor to have a certain artistic approach to doing this and be aware of what makes for the way that an artist would look at the face and try to take those components, those parameters, and bring them into the surgery that we do. And I think we're very successful at doing that. In the end, it provides uh, an appearance that I believe should be undetectable and is undetectable. Since my involvement with hair restoration, I've been fortunate to have um, had a role in many of the advancements in hair restoration, such things as uh, strip harvesting, uh, things such as uh, doing follicular unit grafting. I think that was a very important um, advancement in hair restoration. I've also developed several instruments for that. And most recently, I was involved in some of the technology behind follicular unit extraction or follicular isolation technique. Uh, this was done in part by myself and another physician. And we became very much aware of trying uh, methods to eliminate transection and did this in, in part by limiting the depth of the punch that we were using and developing a device around that. In particular, I think that patients, most patients, are suitable for either strip harvesting or FUE. However, I think that younger patients, patients with very limited hair loss, can do very, very well with follicular unit extraction. Also, the patient where there's been uh, multiple harvesting situations with strip harvesting and now they're down to uh, other means to try to obtain grafts probably is a good candidate for doing follicular unit extraction. Uh, patients have to realize that as you harvest more and more with FUE, which has become increasingly popular, you have to realize that you are creating little uh, areas of change in pigment where the grafts have been harvested from, areas where uh, the area can thin out ultimately as you harvest more and more grafts. So there's advantages and disadvantages to both techniques. I'd also comment that on with follicular unit extraction, if the patient really wants to wear their hair quite short, then FUE is probably a better way for them to go. If, on the other hand, uh, they can wear their hair a little bit longer, what's a little bit longer? Well, perhaps a quarter of an inch to half an inch in length, then in terms of cost-benefit ratio, then strip harvesting still makes a lot of sense. I think it's an important question to ask ourselves when is a patient really a candidate for doing this procedure, particularly in terms of age. There are unfortunately young men who lose their hair at quite an early age. We're talking sometimes as young as 14, 15 years of age. I think it's too young to start doing something surgical. I would suggest that uh, ideally I'd like to have a patient who's at least 20, 21 years old before I'd consider something surgical. There are, however, exceptions to that, but they're few and far between. In terms of the upper limit of age, we've done patients who were well into their 80s. Um, I know that may surprise a lot of people, but there are men who, for whatever reason, wish to have it done, and if they're in good enough health, then it's a, reason, a reasonable thing to undertake. Female hair loss is increasingly uh, something that we're seeing in terms of possible patients. Um, women have a more complicated history oftentimes in terms of their hair loss. What I mean by that is with men, we often see a clear pattern of male pattern hair loss 
which we can approach uh, surgically and with medication. With women, we often have to be concerned about other metabolic diseases such as thyroid disease, perhaps anemia, perhaps uh, hormonal changes related to menopause. So it tends to be more complex. With women, we often institute a program of medical therapy, and this might include medications such as minoxidil, perhaps uh, certain supplements, hormonal manipulation, uh, use of laser devices such as laser cap. We clearly can get a positive response from a lot of these things. And so as an adjunct to doing uh, the medical therapy, then we can think about doing hair restoration surgery. And with I think the key thing in terms of deciding what the maximum is in terms of transplants that a person can have is what is their donor density, what is the laxity of the tissue that they have. Clearly most patients have enough to do two or three sessions of significant size, but there are exceptions and patients can do sometimes four or five sessions. It's going to be limited. We certainly want to take hairs from what's considered a safe area where we know they're going to have hair for the rest of their life. One of the questions that people have is whether they might be a candidate for something which was called scalp reduction. And there are variations of this type of surgery. Fortunately, or unfortunately, this has fallen out of favor over the last 10 or so years because with follicular unit transplantation, we can get such a natural result. With some of the scalp reductions, there were patients who had stretch back, meaning the area would close, but then it would open up to a certain degree or spread. Uh, some of the results were equivocal. Uh, so in general, scalp reductions have really fallen out of favor, and I don't know many physicians who uh, would do it. In rare instances, there can be uh, a situation where you may want to do a variation of that, and that's often a patient who's had other surgery, uh, oftentimes flap surgery that was done in the past, and we can do a, a mini or modified scalp reduction for that patient, and it makes sense to do, and it's the right thing to do. I think it's important to note that with the procedure that we're doing today that the discomfort is really minimal whether it's strip or whether it's uh, harvesting with FUE. We notice that the amount of swelling is really reduced with the technique that I'm using uh, and any complications are markedly reduced with the technique that we follow. One of the reasons that I think that patients are attracted to coming to this facility is that we have uh, a superb team. It's not just about myself or Dr. Nussbaum, but we have a great team of technicians who can uh, provide us with great graft dissection, uh, placement of grafts to ensure that patients get the most natural uh, result that's possible and achieve the results that they're looking for.